Hello everybody, it's time for another round of new content to go over and see what practical uses they may have. Since it was recently the holiday period and because this batch of content was relatively small, I insisted with my usual discussion partners that they take a break and opted instead to handle this myself. It's probably more accurate to describe this as an analysis than a discussion, which requires more than one participant. With that the briefing out of the way, let's get started with the ARs. The Tiger's AR can be obtained from the Fortune Bag banner, which you can pull on by using special New Year's currency obtained from doing the associated event drop quest. This AR grants 10 CP to the equipping unit, as well as a damage multiplier of 1.4 against enemies with oppression to the equipping unit and to allies adjacent after being moved by the player. Equip this AR on anyone with a strong charge who likes to be moved, in particular, any damage dealer who inflicts oppression may especially benefit. Durga, Necros 3, Fail, and Tajikaro 5 would be good fits. The Outlaws AR can be obtained from trading in Rainbow Fragments and Envari Shop for a limited time. This AR lets equipping units inflict charm to enemies in shot range at phase start, at a maximum rate of 80%. It also grants the players up to a 10% increase in the drop rate of HP and attack seeds of all sizes. And, unlike the After School Workshop AR, this effect also applies to the support slot units equipped with it. Thus, a maximum increase of 30% can be achieved, with two of these Outlaws ARs and one After School Workshop AR stacking effects. Equip this AR on anyone in your C grinding team, including any among your submembers. You may also wish to update your support lineup to have a unit with this AR equipped to gain ally points from other players who grind seeds. If you want to use the charm effect, consider bringing Goemon or Jiudong to your team to extend the charm duration. Let's now move on to the evos. Nomad 4 received an evo which extends his movement in each direction, given he is at maximum HP. Since he already had increased vertical movement, this evo lets him move 3 squares forward or backwards natively, and 2 squares left or right, without relying on a movement buff. At maximum HP, after moving, he bestows crit self at a 100% rate and to allies left and right of himself at a 70% rate. If you can keep his health to a maximum, Nomad is primed to be an excellent zone seller, holding either the front line or remaining in the back, while being able to distantly move other allies while being out of reach from magic and shot enemies. This crit to allies may be useful if you are stalling from the back, beside a damage dealer. His own personal crit makes him a decent pick for quick clearing dailies and small maps but you might also find it useful for long-term short-range damage if you can outheal any counterattacks. Lastly, Leech of 4 received an evo which increased his advantage against each weapon change status improved from a 1.4 to a 2 times damage multiplier. He also bestows Glint Strengthening to self on arrival which doubles the activation boost of Glint to 20%. And now, if after he moves, Leech has 9 DRMR CP, you will grant CS weapon change to all to allies adjacent to him. This CP check will take place after any CP gain or loss effects have been applied that were triggered by that move. So, he can still have under 90 CP before being moved and grant the CS weapon change, as long as he reaches 90 CP after that move. Credits to Melkosma for clarifying this. Because Leecho gains CP whenever he moves, and because his charge is all range, he is generally unable to maintain his CS weapon change bestowal due to his eventual unmissable charge that brings his CP back to zero. This can be overcome by keeping a CP below 100 at all times with either Halloween Toji or Tindalos, or by keeping a CP constantly at 100, such as with a Christmas tree or his setup. Alternatively, you may wish to exploit his glint strengthening instead, which will guarantee both his weapon change to blow and skill lock provided you fully skill seed him and provide him with glint. Mind that you'll not be able to take advantage of this if you have him charge. Okay, that covers all the new content released for this event. Let's hope for another year of interesting content from Lake Funders. I'll see you all in the next video or stream. Bye bye!